This B760 motherboard here is easily the cheapest B760 motherboard out there on the internet right now. It's actually coming in quite substantially cheaper, around $50 cheaper than the last budget AliExpress motherboard we took a look at, the B660 Soyo. And I'll put the review up there, but that motherboard ended up being a really good value motherboard when I checked that out. This thing at $72 shipped to your door worldwide. It doesn't have to do a whole lot in order to get a recommendation, but I will say it barely gets a recommendation here at Tech Your City because there's a lot of weird things going on with this board, but in the end, if you can get through all the quirks, it ends up being absolutely fine with an i5-13500 and I guess that's where you would want to go if you were getting something that's value orientated on the motherboard side. However, if you're thinking about getting this thing with an i7-13700K or an i9-13900K, just forget about it. But let's talk about all the weird behavior that I experienced on this motherboard and how you can get around it if you're thinking about getting this board and also some other recommendations that make this thing pretty good. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and this is the B760M VDH from a brand called Jing Yu. I've never tried their motherboards before. However, we've got two DDR4 DIMM slots, the LGA 1700 socket, and also two heat sinks across the VRM, which is an 8 plus 1 phase VRM. Now, straight away getting into that VRM, it's the most important part of a motherboard, especially on a budget where you do want to sort of separate the good from the bad. And this VRM is barely possible in that I put an i5-13500 uh, with this and I ran some benchmarks in Cinebench and gaming as well and it was just giving out bizarre power readings from the software to the point where I had to cross-reference it with a, another B760 motherboard I had here but when I did do that cross-referencing data I did see that it was using about 20 watts more in the maximum Cinebench stress test. So the VRM is less efficient than the B760M Steel Legend, for example, from ASRock. But at that being said, 20 watts is not such a big deal when you're looking at saving a substantial amount of money from the upfront cost of the motherboard. However, the VRM temperatures itself with the i5-13500, we were getting over 80 degrees on the MOSFETs and then the heat sinks were going over 65 degrees. So it was getting a bit toasty and this is in a 21C ambient environment. So if you are going to get this motherboard, you may wish to maybe put a active heatsink over the VRM. However, that said, I would definitely not couple this with anything higher than an i5-13500. I think if you're going with an i7-13700K or an i9-13900K, this thing is just going to throttle itself pretty much instantly. But the weirdest thing about this board was actually two really weird things. First of all, the power readings with Cinebench were showing 180 watts, sometimes going up to 190 watts, when from the wall that just wasn't showing that data when we cross-referenced it with the ASRock board. And then in games, it was showing this data as well, to the point where if you were using this amount of power in, say, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you would be using more power than an i9-13900K. So... I don't know what's happened with this board in terms of why it's reporting such high numbers, but cross-referencing the data from the wall against the ASRock B760M Steel Legend, for example, it's only using up a little bit more power. So it's not a bad board. It's doing its job in games. It's giving out fine FPS. The Cinebench scores are absolutely fine as well. But that being said, it's just a weird behavior that I'm noticing when it's reporting on the software. Now going into the BIOS, this is the second bad point. I'm not going to even say weird anymore because this BIOS is just straight up bad. And here's where going into this BIOS, things are just all over the place to the point where it is just the most obnoxious, disorganized BIOS I've seen. And also the settings, they've got four different power limits. Well, for instance, you've got apparently four power limits. I just couldn't find power limit number three. So it's just gone power limit one, power limit two, and then just gone straight to power limit four. So there's just like settings that are missing. There's settings that don't work properly. Uh, undervolting this thing as well, it just doesn't undervolt at all. However, that being said, undervolting on 13th gen is really 
Intel locking out pretty much all the BIOS manufacturers. That said, this BIOS complete mess, but at least you can lock in your XMP profiles with DDR4 memory, so that's a good thing. So basically, if you get this thing, I wouldn't really try and do a whole lot with it. I'd just lock in your XMP profiles and call it a day because there's no options there to, uh, for instance, save any profiles as well. If you manage to figure out the settings in the BIOS, there's no options to change anything. So Jing Yu, I think that's how you pronounce the brand name. They really need to get up to speed with how they um, implement their BIOS on a motherboard. Going through the USB ports at the rear of this board, everything worked fine, no dropouts, the NIC was fine, and you're probably like, Brian, that's normal, but I mean, when you're paying this little for a B760, I guess you kind of want to know, is like everything just going to work fine when you set it up? So the M.2 drive booted up to Windows 11, absolutely fine. Graphics card, we put in an RTX 4090 for testing. That was working absolutely fine. So once you get this thing set up, you're going to have no problems whatsoever. However, the onboard audio, that is okay. It does pass the mark in that below 50 hertz, you do have some drop off there and it's quite big. Though the crosstalk was decent and the noise levels, the minimum noise levels were pretty decent too. However, the mic import is very tinny and it does have noise. So if you are serious about audio, I would get something different. However, if you're just using a mid-range pair of cans, say for instance, I use the ATH 500X Airs, they're going to do an absolutely fine job coupled with even something like this onboard entry-level audio. Now, with that juicy information out of the way, it's conclusion time with the B760M VDH from Jingyu. And do let us know if I've butchered that pronunciation. I haven't come into this brand before. Hopefully, I got close to being right there. But 72 bucks that's the price that we're asking here from this brand. And they've got a bit of work to do with the BIOS. They've got to fix up that... Uh, the wattage readout. I mean, the only reason I could think of them implementing that would be to maybe try to stop the VRM from getting so hot. So they're overstating it. So it throttles itself. That's perhaps a reason if they're doing that, they just don't want the motherboard VRMs burning up. But other than that, the board checks out. Once we got the i5-13500 in this thing, locked in our XMP profiles, we had the gear one ratio, we could lock that in, which is very important on the... 12th and 13th gen with DDR4 to get really good performance in your games. Once we did all that, it worked. And 72 bucks coupled in with the i5-13500 and what that's bringing to the table in terms of value for money, coupled with the fact that it checks out okay with the box cooler, you've got yourself a recipe for a bare bones kit that is extraordinarily good value for money that's just going to do everything. It's going to be the jack of all trades and the master of value. And that's what we're, I mean, the main focus at Tech yes City is I'm always looking for value, whether it's used or new, I'm just a value hunter. And this board, it does okay. Would I recommend it for the masses? No, I would say if you can afford a bit extra, go get something like a B760M Steel Legend. You're going to be able to put an i9 in that or i7 in the future. You're going to have uh, better efficiency, etc. But if you are a budget enthusiast and you love cookie cutting, this board is going to check out and it's going to do fine with a snowman, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, 3600, i5-13500. You just got yourself a really king combo here that will just give you an awesome gaming experience. If you want to chuck 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in, you'll have an actually pretty solid video editing machine as well. So you can get the best of all worlds, workstation and gaming on a budget in 2023. And so this motherboard can be that baseline. Just understand that after that, you're really gonna have nothing to look forward to in terms of upgradability. The motherboard may only last a couple of years. I can't test longevity here at Tekka City, but I do know 80 degrees is kind of like my threshold for temperatures on not just the CPU, but also the VRMs. Like once we start going over 90 degrees, and you put that in a case, you go into summer, that can spike a lot higher too. So there's a reason I have these kind of points that I like to stick to. And it's usually 80 degrees is max. And then 70 degrees is kind of like that safety limit. So uh, me personally, I run my stuff usually under 70 degrees all the time because I just like to have no crashing, no stability issues. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the Jing Yu budget b760m vdh motherboard if you did then be sure to hit that like button also let us know in the comment section below 
If you've tried any other of their motherboards out there and what did you think of them? Have you tried this motherboard? What do you think of it? And also, what do you think of the i5-13500? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon right after this question of the day. And this comes from Graham Shaku. And they ask, I just found locally an MSI RTX 2060 Super 8 gigabyte for around $167. Is that a good deal? So the deal that you got there is pretty okay. It's not the best deal I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst. So decent deal on a 2060 Super, providing it's in pretty decent condition. You've checked the card out. There's no rust on the cooler and stuff like that. It's decent. Anyway, hope that answers that question. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.